Hello everybody and welcome back to the Tiny Fibre Studio. My name is Bex and this is a channel all about knitting and spinning and occasionally some other crafty stuff. Today we're going to be talking about a particular spinning tool which has uh, recently come to live with me. If you've been watching this channel for a while you might have already figured out that there are certain types of spinning tools that particularly float my boat. Those include uh, vintage spinning wheels and other spinning tools, particularly anything of a sort of 70s or mid-century design, and also anything that is compact, transforms or flat packs in some way for easy storage. When those two things combine, I can't resist getting involved. That's what happened with this little thing, which is the Louette S40. Now this is otherwise known as the hat box wheel, the suitcase wheel, the mini Louette. It's got a few different nicknames. Its official name is the S40 and it was first released in the late 1970s. I've seen 77 and 79 as being the years when it was first released. So take your pick of those two. And production continued through until 1994 when it was discontinued. But there was such demand for it that in 2015, they released a limited re-release of 125 numbered and signed wheels. So it'll be pretty obvious if you've got one of the later re-releases because those had um, a number out of 125 and also Yan Luet's signature on them as well. So it's really obvious if you've got a re-released version. But my understanding is that they tried to keep everything as similar as possible, except where the original parts either weren't available anymore or where there was a better alternative. Most Luets have a number on the underside of the treadle and that denotes the year and the month of the manufacture. Unfortunately, this one doesn't, um, but that does mean that it's more likely to be towards the beginning of that production range, so late 70s, early 80s. So let's have a little look at the wheel. The case has a leather handle on top with a formed plywood lid. To unpack it, you just flip the catches open and lift the lid off, revealing the drive wheel and the treadle underneath. Inside the lid is the flyer assembly. It's got its own little storage area and it's also got some storage space for two additional bobbins on a built-in lazy kate. So this is a kind of all-in-one package. You've kind of got everything that you need here to be able to spin and ply yarns on the go. To assemble it, you just lift the flyer out of its mount and slip the brown rubber band off the hook. And then on the side of the drive wheel, you loop that rubber band over this little screw head and then locate the two flyer pins into the black holes. And that's it. You might have noticed that we haven't talked about a drive band yet, and that's because there kind of isn't one sort of, or at least not one that remotely resembles anything that you're probably thinking of as a drive band. And that's because this is a wheel that uses something called either direct drive or friction drive. And that means that this little black band around the edge of the flyer is actually the drive band. And that is driven by just rubbing against the side of the drive wheel. The wheel turning towards you is clockwise and away from you is anti-clockwise. So if you're struggling to get your head around this, it's easiest to think about it from the flyer side rather than from the treadle side. The direct drive system makes for very easy assembly, but it does mean that in this case there's only one ratio and that ratio is slow. <laughs> it's about three and a half to one which is really slow, um, even on wheels that are designed for making pretty chunky yarns, even that would still be considered quite slow. So if you want more twist, you'd better be prepared to treadle quite quickly. The flyer has a huge delta orifice and the yarn then also has to pass through this little hole before it gets onto the bobbin. So the delta orifice kind of looks like it should be amazing for really massive art yarns, but it's got to get through that little hole 
onto the bobbin and also the bobbins aren't massive either so it's probably not a great option for art yarn unless you want to produce very small quantities. The wheel uses scotch tension with a loop around the end of the bobbin and you just use this little screw here to control the brake tension. In my small amount of experience so far, it really doesn't need very much tension at all. Uh, again, because you're going quite slowly and it will take a while to build up twist, you don't really want that yarn being pulled out of your hands too quickly. To change the bobbin, all you need to do is just unscrew this little black knob at the base of the bobbin there. And then you'll find that the front of the flyer and the flyer shaft come out the flyer shaft is actually connected to the flyer arms by a sealed bearing, so it's got a very smooth motion to it. And then obviously you can change your bobbin over, pop it back onto the flyer shaft. Flyer shaft goes back into that little hole on the triangular section. And you just tighten up that knob again. And just make sure that the brake band is looped back around the end of the bobbin. When you're ready to disassemble, you just take the flyer pins out of their holes, lift the brown rubber band off the screw head, pop that back into its storage place in the uh, lid of the box, pop the lid on, flip the catches, off you go. There are a couple of things that I need to fix on this wheel to get it running kind of 100%. The first thing and probably the most important is that right now, occasionally when you're treadling, the drive wheel will actually hit the triangular upright. Um, that isn't because the wheel is warped. The wheel is made of plywood, so it'd be very rare for it to warp unless it got wet or something like that. But there is something to do with the, uh, the actual axle assembly that's going on there that's making it impact against the wheel. So I need to sort that out. I also need to fix the flyer arm. Now the flyer arm right now is a bit of a mess and I can kind of understand why because when these wheels were originally released they had four flyer hooks and from what I've read those hooks were not optimally positioned in a lot of people's opinions to be able to fill the bobbin evenly so people would just add additional flyer hooks. The only problem with this one is that when they added those additional flyer hooks they either didn't pre-drill holes for them or the holes that they pre-drilled weren't big enough and the hooks are also a little bit too big. So yeah, it's just a bit of a mess and they've actually split the flyer arm as well. However, this should be a pretty easy fix because if you look at the end of the flyer, there's a little screw there um, that you just unscrew. So I should be able to just find some doweling that's the right diameter unscrew the existing flyer and put my new one back in and I'll find some smaller hooks as well because these clearly are just too big um, in actual fact. These, if they're twisted the wrong way, actually hit the drive wheel. The other thing that I need to do is a repair to the lazy Kate on the inside of the lid. This seems to be something that has happened to quite a lot of these wheels over the years. The material that they used um, to attach the far end of the lazy cake is a kind of rubbery material. Reminds me a little bit of a glue stick um, from a hot glue gun, that type of material. And over the years that has just perished. Fortunately, Luet actually do a repair kit for this. So I think that's what I'm going to order and we'll just get that sorted so it's all up and running and uh, able to be used as a lazy cake. And while we're talking about repairs and um, spares and all that kind of stuff, Luet do a very good job of still providing spare parts for a lot of their wheels. So if you do have an older Luet wheel, there is a very strong chance that Luet still have spares for them. And actually a lot of the wheels have pretty interchangeable parts. So yeah. Reach out to Luet if you have any issues with a vintage wheel and they are super helpful. They will try and do their best to help you out. So there you go. That is the Luet S40. Um, pretty cute little wheel. Um, it's not something that would necessarily be somebody's only wheel, I don't think, because of the limited ratio. 
but it's definitely a really intriguing little uh, curio of the spinning wheel world. So I hope that you enjoyed having a little bit of a look at it. If you did and you would like to find more content on this channel, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also hit the notification bell if you'd like to be informed when I upload future videos. In the meantime, between now and the next video, you can find me on Instagram as Tiny Fiber Studio. I hope this was interesting for you and I will see you again soon in another video. Take care. Bye.